On a specified thousand. I'll play. What? Hello there again, friends. We are on the air. It is New Works Productions presenting Static Stories. Tonight's performance is Some Enchanted Stevening, written by Alexandra Reed. So gather the family around, gather your friends around, whatever listening device you have, and I hope you enjoy tonight's performance. But first, let's show you what's going on behind the scenes here at New Works Productions. Coming this April, there's a secret buried at Carnival Lane, and your help is needed to solve it. It's a two-hour pool diet for your detective. You find the clues. You ride the rounds. You interrogate the suspects. Live and interactive. Completely virtual. A brand new virtual pool diet from New World's Productions. Who will tell her story? Tickets go on sale for Carnival Mayhem on April 2nd. Visit our website at newworksproductions.com for more information. How well do you know your music trivia? Each month, join New Works Productions for Drop the Needle, our newest free trivia night, where you can participate with us as we venture into the jukebox and figure out those mystery musical notes from days gone by. Also, each month, join us for Broadway Buzzed. How well do you know your musical theater? How well do you know your musical theater when you're buzzed? Let's find out. Follow our social media for dates and times. And then it's ready, set, action, as we take a deep dive into movie trivia. Get ready for your close-up and show me the movie, new from New Works Productions. Join us this month and each month for Show Me the Movie. All that and so much more ahead from New Works Productions, but now... It's time for Static Stories. Gather around the radio, friends. Let's take a dive back into nostalgia with some Enchanted Stevening. On St. Valentine's, Cupid descends from skies above to shoot his arrows made of gold, helping mortals fall in love. The Cupid you've come to recognize is not the same god that you've known, for that little cherub boy with its chubby cheeks is now a young man, full grown. This was a year unlike any other, one that Cupid would never forget. For his mother, Venus, had a job for him, his toughest assignment yet. (laughs) 
Cupid! Cupid, are you ready? Almost, Mom. You're going to be late. You only have 24 hours to make all the mortals on Earth fall in love. Tick tock! Oh, Mom, I've done this a million times. I could do this blindfolded. All right, I've got my bow, my golden arrows. Looks like I'm ready to go. Cupid, honey, there's just one more thing. There is? Well, your father and I, we have plans tonight. And? Well, that means... Wait, no. Cupid. But, Mom! It's only for one day, sweetheart. No, please, don't make me bring... What up, big bro? <laughs> hey, Steve. This is gonna be lit. Mom. Do I have to bring him? He's going to ruin Cupid, everything. Cupid, Jupiter, Uranus, Johnson. Now you listen to me. For the first time in millennia, your father hasn't conveniently forgotten about Valentine's Day. Now you're going to take Steve with you or you will be grounded for the next thousand years. Do you hear me? Yes, Mom. Good. All right, get going or you'll be late. Have fun, you two. Bye, Mom. Oh, and Cupid? Yeah. Watch over him, okay? He's been hoping for the chance to come with you for years now. Show him the ropes. Soon enough, both of you will be traveling the earth helping humans fall in love. Sure thing, Ma. Let's go already. <laughs> with his bow and arrow in tow, and his brother riding piggyback, would Cupid fill his quota this year? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. And now a word from our sponsors. Bright as the sun Ooh, the more you use that paste The cleaner you feel Yeah Nine of ten Dentists agree The kiss from a rose Is to be Say goodbye To the plaque On your teeth Say goodbye to the plaque on your teeth With seal <coughs> Toothpaste, only $1.99 Cupid descended from Mount Olympus to Earth's waiting lovers below. He arrived at the break of dawn with his younger brother in tow. Whoa, so this is Earth, huh? Yep, this is it. Nice, nice. I like what Aunt Guy has done with the place. What part of Earth are we in? This is Italy. We'll start here. Make our way through Europe, then we'll hop over to the Americas. Once we're finished over there, it'll be time for lunch. Sweet! Alrighty, who's first? Aha! Target spotted. Who, who? Come here, I'll show you how it works. You see that guy over there? The man in the suit walking the dog? Well, he's destined to be with that lady, the one sitting on the bench. So, I gotta shoot them both with a golden arrow, but I have to do it at just the right time. Time. Why? Because if I don't, they'll fall in love with the wrong people. Why? Because when I shoot people, they fall in love with the first person they see. Why? I don't know. It's just my job. But <laughs> look! Soup Man is walking by the bench. You almost made me miss them. Okay, Steve, watch and learn. <laughs> and that's how it's done. <laughs> That's nifty. How do you know who to hit? There's a master list. I needed to look at it for the first hundred years, but eventually I could just feel it out. You get used to it. So why are you the one who has to do it? Because if I didn't, there would be a lot of lonely mortals on this earth. Valentine's Day is really hard for some people. So what better day to make people fall in love than on February 14th? I'm their only hope. <laughs> Good point. The boys traveled through Italy, from Florence to Rome. They hopped up to France, where the Parisians call home. Very cool. Hey, uh, when are we hitting up Greece? I've always wanted to go there. Oh, we don't go there. Why not? Well, Cousin Eros kind of has the monopoly on Greece. Ooh, right. Okay, this next one is a one-arrow job. What does that mean? What's a... One arrow job. It means I only have to hit one person. Why? Because the other guy is already in love with him already. Occasionally, that's just the way it goes. People need a little help sometimes. <laughs> so who decides who's meant to be together? Who makes that list? Mom, 
Duh. <laughs> what? She's the goddess of love, you dink. She arranges all this stuff, then sends me out to make sure everyone falls in love just the way she planned. So then, how does she know? I don't know. She uses an algorithm or something. Honestly, where have you been for the past 8,000 years? Cute, but he's getting away! Ah, crap. <laughs> Steve, you need to stop distracting me. That man almost missed the opportunity to be with the love of his life. Okay, I'm sorry, yeesh. <laughs> Come on, I'm running behind. I still have to hit Nice and Bordeaux before rush out. The boys flew from France to Germany, then to England, Scotland, and Wales. All while Steve asked question upon question, and Cupid regaled his brother with tales. What happens if you don't hit your targets? I don't know. I've always filled my quota each year. Uh, what if you miss? I never miss. Ow. All right, just a quick stop over to Iceland, and then we'll be finished with Europe and on the way to North America. With Europe's lovers happily struck with Cupid's magic bow, where would the two brothers end up? After a word from our sponsors, you'll know. Heaven Liquid heaven Made of all the stuff Your skin needs to be peed Results are guaranteed Within a week It's the moisturizer Cheek to cheek it's Cheek to cheek moisturizer So you can keep that baby bottom smoothness Now, back to the show Their time in Europe had come to an end, so Cupid and Steve traveled forth across the wide Atlantic Ocean and to the Great White North. <laughs> so where are we now, huh? This is Canada. Looks nice, eh, Cupid? Uh-huh. Uh, can I try one this time? I don't think so. Oh, why not? <laughs> because I don't want to find out what happens if the wrong person gets hit with my golden arrow. Oh, come on, Q. Let me try. Please, 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 please. No. Please, 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 please. I said no. No! What's going on, boys? Cuba won't let me play with his bow and arrow. You can let your brother have a turn. It's mine. He's going to break it. Do I have to come down there? Good. Now play nice, you two. You heard her. Gimme, 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 gimme. Okay, but you get to try it just once. And it's not a toy, okay? This is a huge responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. I, I want to try. Just a second. Let me find someone on the list. Someone easy. Someone like... <gasps> Dora. Oh. Who? <laughs> Hurry, Steve. Hide before she sees us. Um, behind this bus. Hurry up. Go, go, go. Dude, don't push me. What's wrong with you? It's... Dora. Who's Dora? <laughs> she works at the university, classics department. She studies Roman history and gods like us. Oh, oh, she's changed up her hair since last year. Oh, gosh, she looks so pretty. Ooh, <laughs> you like her. I do not. Cupid and Dora sitting in the tree. <laughs> Shut up. So what's her deal? Is she single? Every year I worry that her name will come up on the list, but it never does. She's never been in love. I just know we hit it off. We have a lot of stuff in common. So why don't you just shoot her and get her to fall in love with you then? You allowed to do that? They don't work on me. That's part of the whole thing. He who holds the bow and arrow cannot use it for his own game. Even if I was standing right in front of her when I hit her with an arrow, even if I'm the first person she sees, she couldn't fall in love with me. If you bothered to read the handbook, you'd know all about it. <laughs> So it's impossible. <sighs> it's hopeless. So give it to me then. What? Give me your bow. I'll shoot her. You can't. She's not on the list. I don't know what will happen if you shoot her. So? So? 
Mom will have a fit. I'll be in so much trouble. It's fine, Q. I'll tell her I did it. I'm the favorite anyway, so it's not like she'll care. Now give it. I'm serious, Steve. This isn't a toy. But if you keep wasting time, she'll end up on the list next year or the year after that or the year after that. You gotta stop her from getting on that list. Take charge, my man. Do something for you. I said no. Without a second thought, Steve reached for Cupid's bow. And as the brothers fought each other, one of the arrows was suddenly let go. <laughs> oh no. Yes! Oh, this is bad. This is very, very... What's done is done, big bro. Go over and talk to her before some hunky chemistry professor with tenure gets to her first. <laughs> okay. I'm going. What the hell was that? <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> Hi. So, uh, how you do? <laughs> Fine. I mean, less than I was a second ago, I guess. Uh, wait, don't you feel anything? Other than the pain in my arm? Huh. It didn't work. I'm sorry. Who are you? Oh, no one. I'm hey, nobody. You, I'm... What's the hold up? Are you getting the wedding bells in your future or what? <gasps> Hello. Hey, lady. Why don't you sculpt a marble statue? It'll last longer. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're so funny. I'm Dora. I'm Steve. I love that name. <laughs> You, why is she looking at me like that? She has the same look Uncle Bacchus has in an all-you-can-eat buffet. Oh, no. So, Steve, what are you doing later? I mean, besides me. Uh, we gotta go. Now. But now. Hey, Steve, wait! I didn't get your number! <laughs> Yikes, what was her problem? Don't. You see what happened? No. When we were fighting over the bow, you didn't hit her with the arrow. I did. But I told you, I never miss. Oh, Steve! <laughs> ah! Where did you come from? What should I wear tonight? Uh, a Cupid, she won't leave us alone. What's gonna happen? What are we gonna do? We? <laughs> we? Oh, no, no. This was all your fault. You deal with the consequences. Here, take the bows and arrows. They're all yours. I quit. Q, wait. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. Where are you going? Home. Without you. You can't just leave me here. This girl won't stop following me. I can and I will. Ever since we were kids, everything that was mine, you wanted. That bow and arrow was mine. This job was mine. And Dora? She wasn't even mine, and you still made her fall in love with you. Well, you can have her. I hope she follows you for all eternity. Cupid! Cupid? <laughs> Cupid disappeared in a crash of thunder, leaving his poor little brother marooned. What would become of the meddling Steve? Well... You'll have to simply stay tuned. If you need to fire up the grill, darling, and you need the best heating money can fulfill, our propane will last you. Longer than you need it For the best propane By Eternal Flame Eternal Flame Because when it blows up It's just gonna keep on burning <laughs> Now, back to the show With his heart fully broken by the girl of his dreams whom his arrow of gold landed upon. With a great roll of thunder and a flash of light, the god of love, Cupid, was gone. Cupid? Cupid! I can't believe he just left me here. I can't believe... Ugh.
Ah! Is he gone? Yeah, he's gone forever. Uh, good. That act was getting old. Wait, an act? Yeah. Pretending to be in love is hard. So you're not in love with me? No, not at all. The arrows don't work on me. I'm Pandora. Pandora. You mean like Pandora's box, Pandora? I mostly just go by Dora now. I'm trying to distance myself from the whole unleashing all evils into the world thing. (laughs) Well, that's fair. Wait, does Cupid know? No. I mean, that was a long time ago, so I'm sure he doesn't recognize me. So what are you doing here? Well, I kind of got into a lot of trouble after opening that box. So I was sent here as punishment. To Canada? (laughs) To the U of T Classics Department. I get to spend all of eternity here teaching students about gods like you. Dang. Well, gods like Cupid. You're not actually mentioned in any of the books. What? (laughs) Must have been some kind of oversight. But if you do me a favor, I'll make sure to include a few lessons about Steve of Olympus in my syllabus. What do you say? Will you help me get back home? Will you help me make things right with Cupid? Of course. Well, then you got yourself a deal. What favor do you need? Well, I've been here for a really, really long time, and I've seen it all. I've seen how Cupid comes here year after year, making people fall in love. But honestly, romance has changed a lot in the past couple of millennia. I think Cupid is doing it all wrong. But this is the way it's always been done. Why change it? Because people change. People have their own free will. People don't just fall in love on Valentine's Day, you know? What, do you think people sit around twiddling their thumbs for the other 364 days of the year while they wait for a guy with a bow and arrow to maybe guide them to their true love? And the type of love that Cupid's arrows bring? That's not real love. What do you mean? Here, let me show you. Look, do you see those two? Yeah, who are they? They were on your brother's list last year. Hey, they don't look very happy with each other. Exactly. They fight all the time. They don't trust one another, and they're always jealous. That's the problem with your brother's little love spell. It's too strong. It can turn people into monsters. Oh, no. And here, look at this woman over there, all alone. She looks so sad. Do you know why? Something tells me you're going to say it's all Cupid's fault. Not exactly. It was your mother's fault. Mom? What do you mean? There was a typo in that list of hers. Cupid ended up going for the wrong target, and he didn't even realize it. That woman was already with the love of her life until Cupid hit her fiancé and she fell madly in love with a complete stranger. She left her behind without so much as a goodbye. Can you imagine how that must have felt? Oh, no. This is horrible. Exactly. So you see, we need to show Cupid that his way of doing things is all wrong. You can't just shoot an arrow into someone's tush and think you've solved all their problems. He's not going to like that. Two Hades with whatever he likes. Now, come on. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get Cupid back down here, and I'm going to go back to pretending that I'm madly in love with you. Got it? Just play along, okay? We're going to show him how it feels to have a broken heart. Okay. You really think this is right? I know it's right. Now, let's get Cupid back down to Earth. Shall we? Let's see if we can summon him. That's a thing? Sure. Back in the day, mortals would make offerings and hope that the gods would help do their bidding. Why don't we try making an offering to get Cupid to come down to Earth? I'm not a mortal, Dora. I have a better way. Mom! Steve, your father and I are out. What's going on now? Mom, Cupid left me! He what? If you have Cupid and Steve, tell them whatever they're doing, they better smart now. No, Mars, honey, Cupid's gone and deserted Steve on Earth. Did he done what? Cupid? You can get out here, right now! My dad. Is it true? He started it. I don't care who started it. You two stay, stay down, down there and finish your job, or I'll send you both down, down to Uncle the Pluto, Pluto and he'll teach you a thing or two. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Good. Now, suck <laughs> enough. Are you happy now, Steve? You got me in trouble. Again. I didn't know what else to do. You wouldn't return my calls. What do you want anyway? I just wanted to thank you, big bro. What are you talking about? Without you, I would have never met Dora here. 
That's right. We're getting married. <laughs> what? I'm thinking an autumn wedding. What do you think, Stevie Kins? Whatever you want, Schnookums. Oh, 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 just stop it, Steve. How could you do this to me? Hey, technically, you did this to yourself. Excuse me? Those arrows pack a real punch. <laughs> How could I refuse when Dora loves me so much? I didn't want to get her hopes up for nothing. Can't believe what I'm hearing. You called me back down here just to rub it in my face? This is just cruel, Steve. Some brother you are. Yeah. It hurts, doesn't it, Cupid? Dora, whoa, you, you know my name? Of course I do. Don't you remember me? Do I look familiar? No, I... Wait, what's going on here? Sorry! <laughs> <laughs> what? It's me! Pandora! It's okay, it's been a while. A couple dozen centuries, actually. Well, I hate to tell you this, Q. Your arrows don't work on me. But you know how you felt when you thought they did? Yes. Horrible. Exactly. You know, a lot of people feel that way after you're finished with them. I bet you didn't know that, huh? What do you mean? Jeez, Q. For someone who says they never miss, you sure are missing the point. <laughs> oh, shut up, Steve. Look, I've been roaming the Earth for a long time, Cupid. So I've seen it all. And your arrows, they're just a spell. All manufactured. That's not true love. And even if it was, true love doesn't always last. Even the people on your mother's list. The ones you think are meant to be together forever? Well, sometimes it doesn't always turn out the way you want it. But the way you force people together with magic, well, it comes with consequences. I can't believe it. All the pain I've caused all through the years. How do I fix it? I mean, you are the god of love. So there's no getting away from that. Maybe you just need to change your approach. Maybe instead of making people fall in love, you provide them with something else. Like what? Here, take this. What's that? Wait, wait, that's the box. Pandora's box. Don't touch it, Q. It's cursed. All the evils in the world were in there. That's right. They were in there. They're not anymore. So what's in there now? Hope. Eh? <laughs> Honestly, Steve, do you read anything ever? After I unleashed all of the evils into the world, when I closed the box, all that was left inside was hope. Cupid, I was supposed to hold on to this until the right person came along, but I think the right God just came along. I can use hope to make new arrows. Mom and I can create a new kind of list. Instead of forcing people together, we can give people the hope that love will eventually find them one day. I've seen the way people get this time of year. People feel lonely when they don't have anyone in their lives. That sounds like a much better way to spend Valentine's Day on the job. So, Dora, since you're not actually in love with my brother, uh, would you like to go grab lunch sometime? I'm really flattered, Q, but you're not my type. Oh. But, hey, you'll meet someone. When it's right, it'll be right. Just don't lose hope. Okay? I won't. No. Seriously. All the world's hope is in that box. Don't leave it somewhere or I'll be in so much trouble. Again. Got it, Dora. Great. Well, I've got a class to teach. Hey, Steve. Yeah? I couldn't have done this without you. Next term, there's going to be a big history lecture with your name on it. Really? I helped? I didn't ruin anything? Nope. Hey, Cupid, your little brother is a lot smarter than you give him credit for. <laughs> well, I'll see you two next year. Thanks for everything, Dora. See you around. Hey, Steve. Yeah? I'm sorry for the way I treated you today. Hey, it's okay, Q. I'm sorry you didn't get your dream girl. And I know I should have just stopped being a pain and let you do your job. No. If you had, Dora wouldn't have opened my eyes to everything we've been doing wrong. People don't need a magic love potion to solve their romance problems. They need hope for the future. And you and Dora made me see that. Aww. 
let's never fight again. Uh, whoa, no promises, Steve. But I will need your help later. You will? Sure. Mom won't like being told she's been wrong all these years. I need you to help me talk to her. After all, you're the favorite. It's nice to hear you finally admit it, big bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go home. And that's the entire tale, my friends. Though it may sound hard to believe, the story of how Cupid's mind was changed with the help of his little brother, Steve. And to you, kind listener, when all things fail and you reach the end of your rope, just remember in times of pain that there is always hope. You have been listening to Static Stories, written by Alexander Reed. Commercial jingles by Dexter Frank, with voice performances by Louisa O'Keen, Matthew Yipchuk, Dexter Frank, Nicole Chino, Alexander Reed. Edited by Lee Siegel and produced by New Works Productions. Static Stories will return with another vintage radio show. Thanks for listening, friends, and we'll see you again real soon.